Hello everyone, my name is Uishiki. At first I would like to say that please kindly subscribe my channel. So today I am going to read part 5 of Robin Hood. And yes, I would also like to inform that the ones who want to watch Robin Hood part 4, they can get the video link from the description box. So now let's begin with our story. Robin and the Porter The market square at Nottingham began to fill early. Traders who lived in the town were already setting up their stalls as the gates opened. Then they were joined by country flock and travelling merchants, many of whom had journeyed from far away. One of the first to arrive was a large fat porter with a red face, long strandly hair and a brushy beard. He wore a floppy white grimed hat and a big crook. Whistling gaily, the porter drove his little cart straight to that part of the square where the steps of the castle came down into the market itself. Most traders avoided this particular spot for the steps lead to the sheriff's living room. He was a mean man and often came into the square to drive a bargain and traders dared not refuse. No such fear seemed to worry the sprout porter for he soon set up his stall right at foot of the steps. He began loudly calling his wares about the din of the market place. A crowd quickly gathered. His pots were good and the price he asked was so much less then they were worth that he soon had only a dozen pots left. Suddenly, the great door above him opened and down the steps came Dame Margaret, the sheriff's wife. With her serving girl, attracted by the noise she made for the crowd around the porter's stall, they parted respectfully to let her through. The porter swift up his cap and bowed. Low to her. Madam, he said, a poor porter would be honoured if so fair a lady would accept as a humble gift these last twelve pots of mine. Why, good master porter, she said with a surprised but friendly smile. I thank you. These are fine and well-made pots, among the best I have ever seen. Only the best would be good enough for you, my lady, said the porter. Damn Margaret smiled again. Next time I must pay you for your pots. You must be sure to let me know when you come to Nottingham again. She said, until then, May I repay you by asking you to eat with my Lord Sheriff and me? The day's first meal is about to be served. So the porter found himself seated at the table next to the Sheriff and in company with twelve other guests or important members of the household. The meal had hardly begun when there was a great commotion at the door. The sheriff, a thin, mean-looking man, glanced up from his plate to see the cause of the disturbance. Can I not eat in peace? He called out irritably. A rough fellow is trying to force his way in, my lord, replied a serving man who had run up. He says he must speak with you. The sheriff pushed his meat away and spilled an apple on his knife point. Must is not a word to use with me. And when I am eating, throw this rogue out and wipe him from his innocence, he stalled. There was moan suffocating at the door as the guards obeyed the order. My lord sheriff, a harsh voice came loudly. I have a message for you from Shay Guys of Gisborne. Hold, called Sheriff, thumping the table with his feast. Bring the rogue here. 
you have a message from Sir Guy, you say. Out with it then. It was written as it, Sir Sheriff, said Richard Malbate. He shook off the two soldiers who held his arms. The letter, then you fool the letter, snapped the sheriff. My lord, the letter was stolen from me as I came here through the forest, replied Malbate. I was set up by twenty men, Robin Hood's cut throats, most likely. If you would send two, then you have no message after all. The sheriff interrupted angrily. What is more, you could be one of the band of villains yourself. Come here to spy on me. He turned to the guard. Wipe the lying knave and then see if a knight in the stock was losing his tongue. The beggar was dragged away and talk at the table began again. I doubt this Robin Hood can be as great as a bowman as man say, said the merchant. No man alive could hit the marks he said to hit. Steps and gossip, said the captain of Castle Guard. They say he spreads a stick as fifty places, said the porter shyly. They say, said the Norman, I see and I will wager on it that I can come as close to that any Saxon. What say you to do that, porter? The porter glanced round the table. It seems, my lord sheriff, that as I am the only Saxon here, that challenge was meant for me, but I am no longer of the build to draw a bow. He went on, patting his large stomach. Although I said so often enough my youth, but if the Norman captain gave it a great shout of laughter, I didn't mean you, Porter, though if you would care to leave your youth again and take up the challenge, I will let you shoot from the halfway mark. Excellent, cried the sheriff, and standing up, he laid the way to the tiling yard. A stick was set in the ground and Norman captain stepped back fifty places, drawing his short military bow back to the full stretch he took careful aim. There was an applause from the onlookers as the arrow thundered into the turf only two inches from the stick. The captain looked pleased as he placed out the halfway mark and handed the bow to the porter. That was a fine shot, said the porter. Then he selected an arrow and took aim. There was even greater shout as his arrow split the stick in two. By the saints, cried the sheriff, you are a better bowman than you are a trader, Master Porter. It was a lucky shot, said the porter, modestly. I could not do it again. I would like to know that for certainly, said the Norman, Captain Rockfully. So the porter took another arrow. He seemed to hesitate before he shoot and the arrow missed the mark, which pleased the sheriff and the captain. I am more used to Saxon longbow, said the porter. That rogue you spoke of, Robin Hood. Give me one and... If you have made Robin Hood, said the sheriff suspiciously, only passing through Sherwood Forest, replied the porter. I shoot around with him and then he gave me the bow because I hit the mark at a time or two. Where in the forest was this? asked the sheriff eagerly. Do you know his hiding place? Could you please lend me and my man there? The porter thought for a moment. He had his camp now in a place that called
call which wood? He said. He hesitated again. I could take you there, but the outlaw rogue would hear if too many of you men came to bring only a dozen and so. See to it, Captain, agreed the sheriff. One last thing, said the porter, we must not leave before sunset. It would not do for me to be seen legging armed man into Sherwood. In the dusk, however, I might pass unrecognized. So our story ends here. In my next video, I am going to read chapter 6, that is the sheriff is tricked. If you liked my today's video, then please like and comment my video. And also subscribe my channel to listen to more such stories and follow all my videos regularly. And don't forget to click on the bell icon. Thank you.